personal finance expert and MeVest founder, Leslie Ann Scorgi, joining us on Canada Now. And Leslie Ann, your latest article in The Star discusses how you can get your financial swagger back in five easy steps. If you've lost that pep in your financial step, which most people have by this point in the pandemic, uh, the purpose of our conversation today is to kind of give you a bit of motivation to get some excitement around your finances because we know excitement leads to momentum. Momentum in the financial world is very good to make progress on your money. Yeah. Now let's get to these uh, five steps. The first of which is do something healthy for your finances every day, even if it's just to move a tiny bit of money into your savings account each day. That's right. So we call that daily saving. We know it's actually really helpful for your money mindset as much as it is building up savings. Very beneficial. Could be like $7 a day or even $2 a day. The act of doing it is, is very healthy for you. The other two things you could do is you could express some gratitude for the money that you do have rather than focusing on, you know, what you don't have. It kind of shifts that mindset to be thankful for what you do have and also learn a little bit about finances each and every week. So that could be, you know, scrolling through various blogs and vlogs on money. It also could be reading a book or signing up for a free online program to help you learn more about finances. This is all really helpful and will help you get some pep back in your step. Absolutely. Absolutely. Step two, your taxes. Don't wait on them. And maybe this is a this is a good time of year to remind folks of that. And, and this might also be that time of year where, uh, well, maybe a little bit later in the year where people are going to realize just how much they're supposed to pay and go, what? I'm supposed to pay that much? Why do it in a lump sum when you could have been doing it little by little this whole time? That's right. So it turns out 79% of people are actually earlier prepared to file than maybe we all thought. So it's well before the deadline that there's this sense of urgency. Now, this is where there's two schools of people, right? There are those who act on that urgency and that feeling. Uh, and then there's those who procrastinate. And I can tell you, I've been in this business for a long time. The earlier you start on your taxes, typically the better outcome because if you rush at the end you're more likely to forget something maybe you forget a form you forget a credit or a deduction that you're actually eligible for the earlier you give yourself the better off you're going to be and then in the in the off chance that you do owe money which by the way that's only like uh less than 30% of the population owes money, 70%, you're getting a refund. That's what the stats nice. show you. So nothing to be scared of. But if you are one of those people who owe money, knowing that early allows you to plan, save up. And you know, you might, you might need to sell that PlayStation. If you yeah. owe <laughs> <laughs> well, and now we've brought taxes into the conversation. So step three, don't do all of this alone. Maybe you could find someone to talk to about your money. That's right. So we know actually millennials are doing a really good job of having open conversations about money. They are like the first generation where the topic is not taboo anymore. And they're pairing up with others to join communities that talk about money. They're also not scared to, to hire a planner or a coach or somebody to help them. And I love that trend because in my opinion, like we see it in our community of, of people who, who we coach and counsel, we see the power of community. We see the power of open conversation. And there is, there's so much motivation and organization and learning that can come from pairing up with others who are like-minded and who also want to make progress on their money. So don't be scared, you know, find somebody at a minimum <laughs> that you want to talk to about your money. And they might help you in keeping that momentum going that you talked about earlier. Cause step four that you have here is to keep making progress, even if it's just a little. And there's just nothing that beats that motivation that you that you get internally 
when you see the numbers start to move. So we use this measure called net worth. Net worth is like the universal measure that tells us if we're making progress. And think about it, like when Forbes publishes the most rich people in the world, they also use the measure of net worth. Turns out we can use it even in our, our microscopic financial lens. It doesn't need to just be for the mega wealthy. Net worth allows us to see, hey, are we making progress? And the cool thing is if the number is improving each and every month, which you should be tracking it each and every month, that means you're on the right track. If it's decreasing, there's only one of two things that can be going on. It means your financial strategy is broken or your behavior is broken. And so you can really zero in on one of those two things and hopefully solve it really fast. Well, and I love this next step. Step number five, I think would be everybody's favorite. Uh, reward yourself. I, I, it, there are not many personal finance experts that would include that, but that's what I love about you, Leslie. And we talk every week and very often it's, Hey, you know, you need a little bit of this. You need a little bit of that because we're all human and we've got to live a little. And I think rewards right now means so much. Any kind of milestone that you achieve with your finances should be celebrated. Even if it's just a small milestone and you you know, pair it with something that you can afford to reward yourself with. It doesn't need to be a blowout vacation. It can be something like takeout. It can be anything that is meaningful for you. But milestones do need to be paired with reward because let's talk motivation. This whole conversation is about getting that pep back in your step, your swagger back and the excitement. And that means that you have something to look forward to. And rewards are really, really helpful uh, for your money psychology, but also they're really good for your bank account. Get you uh, going forward. As long as we keep the, the, the rewards on budget. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Check out mevest.ca, personal finance expert, mevest founder, Hank and Dot's mom, Leslie Ann Scorgy. Leslie Ann, always a pleasure, my friend. We'll talk again. Thanks, Jeff.